Hey everyone, and welcome to the September edition of the Tim Pearson Home Sales Team Market Advisor video. Our team sifts through all the real estate news to provide you with a summary of the most important and relevant information in these videos. We use this information and a lot more to advise our clients on how to use real estate to achieve their personal and financial goals. So if you're thinking about buying or selling a home, please call us and we'll create a customized plan for you. Now, there's a lot of interesting things happening that we will discuss this month, but before I jump into the stats, I wanted to let you know about our first ever fall bash where we are gonna shut down Great Country Farms for a private event. It's gonna be the complete autumn experience with drinks from Blue Mart Vineyard and Dirt Farm Brewery, a bonfire with s'mores, apple cider donuts, private wagon rides, and a corn maze by flashlight. We're gonna have access to the full five acre farm and all it has to offer. So I'm really excited about it and it's all free for anyone who is a part of our client appreciation program as a thank you for all your past business and referrals. And our client appreciation program consists of anyone who has bought or sold a home with us or referred someone to us. So if you're not a part of it, we want you to be. Give us a call and we'll show you how you can use real estate to achieve your goals for you or anyone that you care about. Now that you've got something to look forward to next month, let's take a look at the housing market. Nationally, the market has done exceptionally well over the past year. You can see in this chart that every region is up at least 3.9% from the same time last year. Now by state, you can see it shows that DC is up 1.75% and VA is up 4.75%. When we look at the price changes by price range, we can see that the greatest appreciation has been in the low to middle price ranges, which makes sense because that's where the greatest demand is. Now, as prices appreciate, we see the equity homeowners have increase. And in this chart, it shows that Americans now have at least 20% more equity in their homes than at the peak of the market in 2005. And that's likely because buyers have had greater down payments over the past 10 years, and there have been less interest-only loans, which is where people are making payments only towards interest and not contributing any towards equity in the mortgage payments. So that leads us to this chart, which I love, which shows that only 4.1% of homeowners in the US have negative equity right now, compared to 25% in 2010. The next one I also love shows that 37% of homes are completely paid off. They have no mortgage. That's what we want for our clients. We want you to be able to retire with a fixed income and no mortgage payment. Those last two sh charts show great stability for housing and for homeowners. So the economy and housing has done well over the past decade, but when there is expansion, eventually there comes retraction. And you are hearing a lot about a potential upcoming recession. And there've been several surveys about when this recession will hit. And here are the predictions. Now you would think that would affect buyers and make them nervous. But when Realtor.com surveyed buyers, a higher portion of them predicted the recession would come even sooner. So that tells us that buyers are already factoring the recession into their purchasing decision, and the market is still very strong even with that. But we also need to look and understand the reasons for a recession and what that will do to the housing market. A recession is defined as two consecutive quarters of negative growth in the economy. When there is overexpansion in the economy, then we see contraction. And this, normal, this is normal and usually happens every 10 to 20 years. Now, most of the recessions are fueled by expansion in business or industry. However, the last recession, which we call the Great Recession, was mostly triggered and fueled by housing. Leading up to the recession, there was an unreasonable appreciation of home prices. People were able to buy houses with no money down. People who shouldn't have been able to qualify were able to borrow 106% of a home's purchase price, and they didn't have to provide any documentation. So anyone who could buy a house tried to. This pushed demand higher and pushed prices up. It caused investors who were able to buy homes with no money down to gobble up multiple homes in hopes of making a profit, and it created an irrational exuberance, you might have heard that term, which created a bubble. And the bubble burst, and there were a lot of foreclosures, and the housing market got hit bad. And that was real. And we were in business during that time, and if you were a part of it, or got hurt by it, I want to apologize. It happened to a lot of people, a lot of very good people. 
that were hurt by the recession that caused them to be rightfully fearful of buying another home. The challenge is that three of the past five recessions, the housing prices have actually appreciated, not depreciated. In recessions fueled by business contraction, people often pull money out of business via the stock market and reallocate it into safer investments like bonds or cash or sometimes real estate. From 2005 to 2008, both the stock market and the housing market crashed, so there weren't any safe places to keep money. Now, Jeff Tucker, an economist at Zillow, says the housing crash during the Great Recession left a lasting impression. But as we look ahead to the next recession, it's important to recognize how unusual the conditions were that caused the last one and what's different about the housing market today. Rather than abundant homes, we have a shortage of new home supply. So given the demand for housing and the lack of supply, especially locally, we don't expect housing to trigger the next recession. And it's possible that it could even benefit from investors reallocating money into real estate as a safer investment vehicle. Now we'll have to see what happens, but we all need a place to live. And if you have a home with a low interest rate, you will have stability to ride out the storm with a fixed payment until the dust settles. The last thing I want to mention is for all of you home buyers out there who are feeling put off by rising home prices. Mark Fleming, First American's chief economist, said this, consumer house buying power increased by $44,000 or 12.2% last month compared to one year ago, more than enough to overcome the 7% increase of nominal house price appreciation. In fact, house buying power is now the highest it's been since we began tracking in 1991. Basically put, people are making more money and interest rates are lower, really at historic lows. So while prices may be rising, the affordability of housing is as good as it's ever been. All that to say, we are going to keep an eye on the recession indicators, but don't let that scare you away from making the next best step for you and your family when it comes to real estate. Keep looking at the market statistics for your own town on our website that update each month so you can stay on top of what's happening locally for you. And if you're thinking about buying or selling a home anytime in the next year, please call us to schedule a consultation and we will see what the right information is that you need to know to help advise you on what the right circumstances are to create a game plan that will put you in the best position to achieve your long-term personal financial goals. The market may be hot and homes may be going fast, but we're still helping people buy and sell every day and we would be honored to serve you and your family. We hope you have a great rest of the month. We hope we see many of you at our fall bash. And if not, we'll see you in our next video in October. Have a great month.